Three shots, four par, I just do two. One putt, par four, birdie, woohoo. New driver, info, replace, M2, par five, fairway, what you fin do? Think I'll try to get on into start right, good line, good view, in you, shoot him again. All right, JD from Seven Iron Golf, how are you, man? Oh, man, I'm wonderful. I'm happy to be here right now. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We are, uh, we we're saying here this is a treat. This is a treat for the listeners. We're all uh, we're all using good quality mics. It's exciting. It's kind of like we're all sitting together right now, just uh, shooting the shit and having a conversation. How's things, man? If you uh, if you don't mind, can you just kick it off? Tell us who you are a little bit. Uh, maybe uh, maybe where you're from. Um, anybody who's interested in the seven iron golf, I'd also encourage to go in the show notes, click your Instagram profile because you did kind of a. Uh, a really cool reel on like the inception of uh, seven iron golf, which is awesome. Maybe where you're from and that kind of stuff, just a little brief intro, if you don't mind. Yeah, man, sure. Um, I'm originally from Baytown, Texas, actually. Um, but let me back- backtrack first. I'm JD Craigman. Yeah, I'm the owner and CEO of seven iron golf. Uh, we started in 2021 and really started pushing products at the beginning of the year, 2023, just a long road of getting everything, um, you know, off the ground between manufacturers and logos and a lot of the things I'll be detailing in the reels that, you, that you're referencing now, a lot of behind the scenes work, we're going to start showing our audience just to show how hard it is to actually create a golf brand and go up against some of the giants. So, um, but, you know, I started playing golf about seven, eight years ago in, in South Florida, uh, Miami, Florida, to be exact. And I moved to Houston about two years ago. And I think in between the move from Miami to to uh, to Houston, I was already thinking about the brand and thinking where I wanted to go with things. And once I settled in Houston, I decided to like make it happen. Uh, one of the one of the one of the reasons I chose Houston was it's such a central location. Um, you know, in the United States, I can kind of make a move anywhere, and I felt Houston was really central. And they have some good golf out here in Texas, um, as you know, from the Scotty Shuffers of the world and a few others that actually come from you know, that hail from, from Texas. It was just, it just made sense to kind of get things done here. So we're up and running and, and we're excited to be here. Yeah. Our, uh, our girl, Lauren Zaretsky is down there. She's mm-hmm. the 2022 Canadian amateur champ. She played in the CP women's open a couple of years in a row. So she's down there at Texas and I believe I was talking to her like the morning of making her way down. Now that's up in, That'd be more like Austin, right? Is that in Austin? Um, UT is in Austin. Texas A&M, I believe, is in a whole separate part that I'm not quite sure of. All right. I don't know Texas that well. I've been to Austin. I'm still new to Texas, so forgive me. (laughs) I've been to Austin, and it was a bit of a blur. It was a good time. I remember Topgolf, and I remember Mm -hmm. Terry Blacks and Lake Travis. That was it. Nice. Nice. I went. I tried to go to Terry Black's over the weekend, and it was too packed. I couldn't even get in, so I turned around. Yeah, I think we were in line like an hour there, Bryce. If you've never, if you ever go to Austin, if you if you've never been, it's uh, I think it's like known as the best barbecue on the planet. I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Yeah, it's so good. And we waited like an hour in the sun. <laughs> it was it was tough, but it was worth the wait though. It was really good, really good stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I could do the heat all summer in Texas. That's uh, that's hot. It was spicy. It was spicy. It was in the one twenties, maybe something like that. Yeah, it was hot, hot. Different type of heat, but it's fun. The Lake Travis was awesome. We saw a couple golf courses as we were going around. Um, didn't get it like we had an alarm booked. Me and uh, me and a couple of the buddies had an alarm booked to get up and go golfing in the morning, and then we just uh, I think two of us got up and looked at each other and went back to sleep. So it's just uh, it was fun though. It's good, good times, good times. So, um. So you started up, uh, JD, in 2021. Um, mm-hmm. Was it like a passion project that you're looking at kind of like through COVID? You know, we that's when Bryce and I kind of started up the pod was right, uh, right. end of 2020, early 21. So yeah. um, was that kind of what kicked it off? You got into golf and kind of like everybody fell in love. And, and was there like a hole where you – we hear this story, you know, often there was like a hole or something that was missing. So – you know, that's why I wanted to start this brand. Is that kind of something that you can relate to? Yeah, definitely. I think because I was a huge um, shoe collector, collecting sneakers all my life, probably had one of the, you know, had a really large collection, sold it all, built it back up again. 
And what I, you know, and then you start playing golf, you're starting to look like a way to separate yourself from the others. So I always ev- envisioned having like gloves to match the shoes and shoes to match the shorts and shirts and so mm-hmm. forth. But then as you start to look around and shop, um, there are not a lot of cool golf gloves out there. Now I'm not talking about cool golf gloves in the sense of um, funky colors and styles. That's not necessarily what I, what I would deem cool um, because those gloves sacrifice a lot of quality. Right. So we were looking to create something that had amazing quality, um, but also brought fashion into the game as well. So that's the hole that we're trying to fill. Um, you know, in all in, you know, in all reality, we had to pull away from some of the colors because I realized like manufacturers just couldn't do um, the quality. They couldn't do quality. They couldn't do quality and color at the exact mm-hmm. same time. Mm-hmm. That was a really big issue. And I'm pretty sure if you guys were to go to Amazon today and look at any gloves that have color and read the ratings, they're like ripped first game, first round, first hole. They couldn't they couldn't last as soon as I put them on, they popped. So I wanted to stay away from that. So now we're back to more of the traditional colors, the black and the whites. But I found the manufacturer and we're adding color slowly but surely. So we're still right. trying to stay true to our roots of being a sneakerhead, you know, still being fashionable, but you don't have to stick out like a peacock. You know, mm-hmm. it can be subtle and dope at the same time. Are you um, planning to maybe go into shoe glove combos, like replicating shoe styles in gloves? Is that something? Have you already done that maybe, or are you going to get into that? Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question really quick. Let me backtrack. Is this yeah. on video or is it audio? We got both. Both. Okay. So you do yeah. both. Because I can show you some. I can show you some really cool things that I, that I was doing. I think I haven't really shared with many people before, but if you I want love to hold it, man. on for one second. Yeah, we'd love that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because um, I know... Right, give me one second. One second. Yeah, 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 no problem, no problem. Bryce and I will just fill the air time. We don't do a whole ton of editing, but I know, Bryce, like we were saying, when you get like a really nice pair of shoes and you kind of think like, how can I make this golf shoes? And I'm a shoe and hat kind of guy. Yeah. I think shoe and hat go together personally. And then everything in between, you can kind of do what you want. But I like I that. That's kind of my, my go-to. So I like that a lot. So Bryce, do you have like a pair of shoes that you've worn like as a golf shoe that you've gotten purposely to try and like match things to? No, I actually have not. Well, I guess my black squares are kind of, I had my white, I have, I've had all white pairs of shoes yeah. and then I was like, I need something different. So I decided to go black. So I either pair with like this OTS hat or my, I have another black hat that I wear and right. uh, I'll pair those together. But I also bought a pair of pants to match shoes. So I have my <laughs> old Nikes that are like this kind of light, lighter blue. Um, yeah. They're just the, the Roushes, like just like the standard Roush golf shoes. But I bought this like electric blue pant. So I've kind of been toying with those two i kind of want to tie in a nice blue hat with it but i can also go with a white hat because they're predominantly white and the swoosh is just uh is just blue but i for the most part try to look pretty good out there all the best i can with what i have so so jd i have a question we were just kind of talking about different shoes and and whatnot was there was there like a, a certain shoe that you were wearing or or has there been a certain shoe that you just loved and wanted to match up your golf gear, whether it was your glove or like your hat, whatever, whatever you're trying to match to and bring it from the bottom up. Like, is there one specific one that you've, that kind of stands out for you? Um, well, in order, to, in order to answer this question correctly, I want, I want to kind of just, I want to mention something here. Sure. It seems as if golf, golf shoes now are a thing. And they're producing oh, yeah. a lot more. And I'm talking about the big brands. I'm talking yeah. about the big like, time you know, and so forth. So big a few time. years ago, we didn't have these choices and Nikes weren't dropping left and right. There were some subtle releases here and there. It was the Safari collection from the Jordans, um, from the, uh, I think the Jordan 11s mm-hmm. and a few others here and there. But it wasn't like as crazy as it is now. Um, so I, I, I didn't even think they were real when I first saw the 11s. There was the black. The black 11s, all black patent leather 11 with the red bottom. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's crazy. I want a pair. Yeah. And then coming to find out, the only reason a couple hundred pairs, you had to be, you know, it had to be at a special golf course to pick them up. And then I realized, oh, this is a thing. And those who collect sneakers know about, like, the thing, and, you know, being in the in crowd to get those. So 
I think that pop that Jordan probably started off for me with the whole collecting of golf shoes. And then I started to like branch off. So at the same time they were doing the masters here and there, you would see some shoes come out, but you, you know, you really couldn't find them. They weren't mm-hmm. like mass drops. So yeah, it, it's just really interesting. I really wanted to kind of go back because you mentioned, you know, doing gloves and other colors and, and, um, and matching shoes. So when we originally started, we, we would do it. We, we wanted to kind of do crazy colors, but we realized we couldn't do it. So I got a white glove. Um, I linked up with the chemist here in, in Houston and I was like, Hey, is it possible that we can get the best quality white glove, Cabrera leather, hundred, you know, hundred percent Cabrera yeah. leather and dye the mm. gloves? Is that something we can do? So these are some of the products that we came up with. Um, and I still have like these color codes, so I'm not sure if you can kind of see the exact color here. These yeah. are the, like the Tiffany blue. Yeah. And then we have the Tiffany blue glove to kind of go with it. Oh, no. Uh, oh, I love and, those. I mean, we love the idea. The concept was so cool. The only issue we had is, and I've always told myself, this is my second, this is my, this is my, my second like apparel slash, you know, clothing accessory business. If I got an order for a thousand gloves, I would have to dye a thousand gloves, and I don't have yeah. the manpower to dye a thousand gloves. It just didn't make sense. And granted, it was a real cool color, but you know, it still had its flaws that we just didn't feel comfortable, you know, competing. You know, my goal is to always compete with the the foot joys and the titles of the world. I think if I try to compete with the smaller brands, I kind of get lost in that space. So mm-hmm. I always look at it as like big business, and how can I have big business? And I knew. You know, the color was great, but we couldn't have the color mixing with the mesh. It just wasn't the exact right. quality that we wanted. So we kind of went away from that extremely early, but we had so many really cool um, colorways and samples. Mm. I mean, and they look amazing on the golf course. But, you know, after wear and tear, they'll start to fade, and it just wouldn't be what we wanted to sell um, as a company. So we went away from it. We did, however, um, do the black and white. These are the tour one duos. So we end up doing the black and white. After some research, we realized that, you know, 90% of golf shoes are, are, are black and white anyway. Mm-hmm. And then the second color in there would, would be gray and blue. So we started to do a lot of black and white gloves. These sold pretty well. We did the samples um, with the red and black. These were to go with the Jordan 12s that dropped. Yeah. So we, we were trying to stay up. But we realized let's focus on getting good quality first, and and I truly believe we probably, we probably have one of the best golf gloves in the game. This is the the um, the Tour V1 Pros. This this is it for me right here, the Tour One Pros. This is it. So you know we're, we're working, we're really working hard to put to produce the you know one of the best golf gloves out here in the industry today. So right now you guys have the three models, right? The two is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the two or one. Yeah, pro. we had three models. We had five. I pulled. I pulled two just because of the quality. I, I felt wasn't there. Okay, I like that though. Mm-hmm. Like if you, you know, if you don't feel like it's there, you just like it's just not yep. there, right? Like you just go ahead. So the two or one pro, two or one duo, which is the one that you were showing there, and then two or one. Right. So all of them are one hundred percent Cabretta. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's... Every one, and they're all made in different. Uh, you know, I think. From the, on the manufacturing side, people can go to, you know, Alibaba, pick a golf glove from China and be comfortable with it. Right. We went away from that because we wanted to create a product that you couldn't just easily get and replicate. Well, so I noticed, too, like when I was... A uh, different region of the world to get it. Yeah, when I was reading through the description, it's got like the terry cloth insert on the Tour 1 Pro and like things right. like that to try and like eliminate some of the sweat and stuff. And I know here, like it gets hot, it gets spicy. Like I'm up in Toronto area, it gets hot in the, in the summer. And like even the other day I looked down and my glove was just like soaked everywhere. So it's just, you know, usually you got a couple that you're kind of going through through the round. So, um, and then also like Bryce, I don't know if you saw them, but the stay consistent... Um, like the 50 piece that you got the golf tees. So they're like, they're different yeah, golf so, tees that have like the lines that go up. I actually like that. It, has that ever been done? Was that, was that your idea, JD? I, I don't know if it was my idea, but I had a, I had a conversation with the manufacturer and I was like, I, I want my glove. I want tees to be as consistent as possible. And we sent over a few designs that we were thinking. He sent us back the one with, we had the notches yeah. And he sent us back the actual numbers, and it was, like, perfect. So 
it made sense. And we call them obviously the stay consistencies and it's mm -hmm. a play of stay consistent and consistency. So it was just like, oh, perfect. This actually works. Yeah, it's kind uh, of an and, underrated and, and moving the big hit. Yeah, it's kind of it's a very underrated feature, honestly, because like it definitely yeah. affects your golf swing, the different tee height. I mean, if you're trying to hit like a little squeeze cut and you tee it lower, if you're trying to hit a high draw, you tee it higher. If you can stay consistent on exactly where that tee is going to be every time, I mean, it's an advantage people don't think about. Right, right. A few a few weeks ago, I know Tiger's, I don't know if it was Tiger's caddy, but someone showed that Tiger has these tees and they need to be a certain length. Yep. And then a lot of folks were just like, hey, can I buy some of your tees now? Because we realize if Tiger needs his a certain length, I can buy yours and kind of find my length and then obviously be more consistent. So, yeah. Have yes. you heard that story about Tiger's tees? I've, I've heard that story, yeah. yeah. Have you heard that one, Bryce? Yeah. They were European tour, like a an event not in the United States, and they didn't have any of Tiger's tees on a tailor-made truck. And the crew on the tailor-made truck actually ground down 100 tees by hand like they had an assembly line and ground them all down to the exact height for tiger before he played i think that's oh, wow. pretty funny i didn't I, I didn't hear that story before. yeah so they yeah. just took like your standard three and a half inch tee or whatever it is or two and three quarter and there were a bunch of them just kind of grinding them down to whatever spec he liked yeah. whatever there's he one guy on the like. band saw zipping a little at the, yeah. the end yeah. off it and then one guy on the sp belt sander um doing the uh like the the tip or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's hey, if it's for if it's for Tiger, why not, right? So yeah. all all he needs is a fifty piece to stay consistent. He'll be fine, man. He just dropped him in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so JD, um, do you? Because I don't think we've really talked in depth about this. So we're on to episode one hundred and fifty three with JD, founder of Seven Iron Golf, on a conversation here. So we haven't really talked about like the manufacturing and like how that starts for somebody starting up a business. So are, are you able to speak to that a little bit? Like, are you able to speak to like kind of the inception of, you know, kind of going through, looking through different, different, uh, I guess, wholesalers that, and then kind of getting yeah. it to the point and being able to work with the company to adjust it, to meet the level of quality that, that it's become. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, samples, samples, samples. I think mm -hmm. that was the key for me. I knew it was going to be a, a bit expensive because I was ordering samples around the world from different manufacturers. I told you I didn't want to stay, you know, I didn't want to stay in the in the um, in the eastern region. I, w I really wanted to test everyone and see exactly who had the manufacturing process to set up to do gloves. Even here in the United States, you know, there may, there was maybe like one company, but they really could only produce, you know, maybe three hundred to four hundred gloves. Um, at a time, but it'll take, you know, six, seven months because they're just not equipped to do the mass production like the China, um, mm -hmm. the Thailand and Taiwan and so forth. So uh, the very, so it was, it's a real interesting story on how I found my manufacturer. It's literally a Google search um, and then a Google Maps search as well. So if you wanted to figure out who sold Cabrera leather as an example, who has the best Cabrera leather, you know, they may point you to Taiwan. I actually did a uh, a Google search, a map, Google map search, and like was like literally driving down the Taiwan streets oh, really? looking for like leather makers and so forth because you can pan left and right in Taiwan, mm -hmm. and then you find one, you see a number on the building, you're able to call the number on the building, and then I got with one person who spoke English and I said I'm looking for gloves, they put me on hold, you know, so it was it was a process and it was all because I did not want to go through the traditional Alibaba way. Right. I mm -hmm. did that before. Um, so I did get samples from Alibaba. Some were really good, um, but they just didn't go the extra step. They were more so trying to push you to just kind of make that big purchase. And when mm -hmm. I'm trying to order four and five samples at a time, they're not understanding why. So it was just like, listen, I need to find somebody who can kind of really get me in the door to design my own custom glove. And I think that's the manufacturer that we found now. We have a great relationship. So it's it's trust it's a manufacturer understanding that you need more than one sample and you need various samples um you need to think about the leather or the thickness of it you know cabrera leather can come in many size in, in many thicknesses so you want the thinnest leather that's not going to last but it's going to feel like you don't even have a glove on and it's you know you're just basically raw dog in a club you know in, the, in yeah. a sense the pros can afford to do that because you know, they're getting gloves every round, you know, mm -hmm. they're getting a brand new glove every round, but where's the durability factor in that? 
you know, as the amateur, like how we play, we need the glove to last multiple rounds. So it was it was picking the right thickness of leather to say this is going to last, you know, four or five months. This is going to last two months. This is going to last one month. But this is the quality that we're looking for. So ultimately, we pick something in between. It's going to last more than one round, but it's not going to go through six months of, of obviously playing aggressive golf in the summer of Houston. So we understood that part as well. Mac here for Manscaped. The best in men's grooming. We are back with a limited time offer on the Performance Package 4.0. If you're not watching this on YouTube or on Instagram or somewhere that we have this video posted, you should go look because I'm going to show you everything in each one of these lineups. The Performance Package 4.0 comes with the Crop Reviver, the Crop Reserver, the Weed Whacker for the nose. This thing would take down Eugene Levy and the Lawnmower 4.0. We scroll down to the Platinum Package. It includes the crop preserver that we already talked about. You can't see it in the screen. Over there is a crop reviver, the body wash, shampoo, and conditioner, plus the deodorant, said weed whacker, said lawnmower 4.0. And on top of that, you're going to get free boxers, my favorite pair of all three pairs that I own, my favorite toiletry bag of two toiletry bags that I own, Free shipping plus 20% off using the promo code OTSGOLF over at manscaped.com or manscaped.ca. The best in men's grooming. Let's get to the back nine. We'll see you there. Points good, right? I think I saw them at 24, 25 bucks and below. Right, right. For now, yeah. in all honesty, for now. And I'm willing to kind of enter the market low. You know, if you take a look at some of these other premium golf brands, I mean, they're selling gloves for 30, 40 bucks in some cases. Yeah. I still look at it as, you know, I'm going to win you over on quality. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to win you over on personality now. Now that I'm kind of putting myself out there, and I, I want to, I want to win your trust. So you know, me raising the price to get you to buy once doesn't do anything for me. Having the price point um, that can match up with the foot joys and the and the till made and, and you know and the titles of the world makes me competitive. And then when you see the quality, you're willing to buy again. So. We're looking for repeat customers here, not the one and done. Well, I, I do think, too, like people are looking to invest in a smaller brand now, like in more like I literally was just showing Bryce. Like I just bought Haywood Irons. Like I just got these. Like I don't know if you've ever heard of them. It's a Joshua Haywood's a club manufacturer up in Vancouver, Canada. Um, you know, we're lucky. We get to talk to pretty much a new brand every few weeks i'd say bryce like at mm -hmm. least once a month if not more and our following albeit you know fairly small it's super organic and everybody kind of connects with us and talks to us about you know the people mm -hmm. who we've had on the pod um i think people are like in a world right now where we're kind of in a golf world where we're trying to really connect with smaller brands and people that are kind of trying to really build the game up right so i think now is a great time for anybody to say okay like if i gotta get a glove like seven iron in the show notes below you can click it and go check mm -hmm. and have a look right, right. so it's, it's well perfect. it goes it goes right back to what i've said in previous episodes and i'll probably say it in future episodes too like the smaller brands just care you know they want like they care about their product they want it to be good and if it's not they won't release it i mean it's it's what you avoid with from going to a smaller brand than like a big OEM or big box stores, like they're just pushing out thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands. Like if there's a couple bad ones, I mean, it is what it is. They don't care. Um, those smaller brands will take your product back and fix it or give you a new one. Or and But most of the time they're not even going to push out a product that's not ready because they care and they want it to be good. Right. Like that's, I mean, I'll stand by that for forever because those smaller brands really care about their product. It's like it's like something out of a movie, though. You telling us that you're like, I'm picturing you like walking down the streets of Thailand, like popping yeah, in that's, different that's shops cool. and stuff, right? I, I love that I part. Like, I, I don't think you understand that the journey was, and it's funny because I actually went to Thailand. Thailand, um, I did go to Thailand, but it I ended up going for something else for some other manufacturing gig that I was thinking about. And in that process, I met so many cool people. And I think once you meet one person who understands what you're looking for, they're able to kind of point you in the direction of, yeah. of anywhere, you know, you do want to go, mm -hmm. especially in a country like Thailand or, or, or wherever, you know. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's just a really interesting process, and it's it's something that that Bryce said that I that I really um agree with is that we don't get the luxury of making a mistake. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm on Amazon. I'm blessed to be on Amazon, and that was a, a journey in itself. Um, but one bad review on Amazon, it could you know, hurt. You're possibly, yeah. you're possibly yeah. done. I'm not. I don't have a thousand sales on Amazon, but if I'm able to, you know, if I have five sales and one bad review, it's mm-hmm. definitely going to hurt. So it's yeah. something to think about. We, you know, we don't have the luxury of making those mistakes. I uh, I gotta ask you, how'd you get hooked up with Dan? Man, I know Dan. So how'd you get set up with him? I I noticed that uh, he was wearing one of your gloves. That's my guy. That's my guy. So, um, and, and it's funny. It's all through, it's all through social media. Yeah. Um, it's a powerful I thing posted, though. It is. I posted something one day, Dan was in my comments. I went to his page. I saw he had some really cool pictures and I was like, Hey, you know, would you be interested in, in working with me for three, three to four? I think it was like a three to six months. He was like, sure. We drew, we drew up a contract. I shipped over gloves and that was it. I mean, it really was just that simple. Um, and we end up having a really good relationship, you know, yeah. here on out. He's still my guy. We still communicate. We still talk. He still wishes me the best. I still wish him the best. I mean, just a really good guy. Yeah, I talked to Dan now and again. He's He actually came on the pod because he was doing a, his uh, 12 Days of Dance, um, his Christmas uh, 12 Days of Dance, his giveaway and stuff, which is really cool. And I, uh, I'm i a bit of a watch fanatic, and so is he, and his photography is incredible. Like, he is so incredibly talented. So that's it. If you're looking to showcase a product, that's a good guy. He's, he's just like likable too, you know. He's just like a he is. Like he's he just a personality. Got me into the watch world. Yeah, yeah. Dealing with him, he got me into the watch world. Meaning, I know we actually we did connect on watch. I think he he, he just bought a Rolex at the time. Yeah. Um, and we and we and we connected on that, and I was telling him about my Rolex, and you know, it had like a really good back and forth conversation. But what was interesting about Dan is that he doesn't wear a glove. Which mm. is the crazy part. He doesn't wear a glove, but he was like, I would, you know, I'll take pictures in gloves. I would pass them out. And he had a, a huge tournament. I sponsored the tournament. I gave him over 20, I mean, I think I gave him over 25 free gloves to sponsor his tournament. But that's the relationship that we've built. And if he had another tournament tomorrow, you know, I'll do whatever I can and kind of mm. make sure I get him some gloves as well. And he's helped me get a Canadian audience, which is, I mm-hmm. think, phenomenal. Well, well that's, that's also some of the risks you have to take sometimes, right? You got to bite the bullet on 25 gloves. But if you're getting your gloves in 25 hands, I mean, even if 15 of them love them and come back for more, it's 100% worth it for you, right? Like, I mean, those are exactly. those are risks you got to take with a, as a small brand sometimes. Yeah, you have to use your product to market. You know, the best marketing tool that you have have is the actual product itself meaning Mm -hmm. you know you can go to facebook and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on ads but i can take those same that same um, amount of money in product and ship it across the united states it'll still be cheaper than facebook and you'd have actual real testimonials yeah saying i got this glove for free let's say the glove cost me 10 bucks to make and it's gonna cost me six this cost me five to ship it's just 15 bucks you know, I can get two or three sales in the makeup for the entire thing. So it's, it's definitely worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that too. Cause it's, we, we've, we've kind of found too, like I'm, I'm up in the Toronto area, Bryce is in, in Michigan. So we're, we're able to connect with, um, it's like, we've got a big hub here in the Toronto area. We've got a lot of friends and listeners out in Western Canada, a few down East and a bunch in the Michigan area where Bryce is, and then a whole bunch in like California and florida yeah. like it's kind of cool to see like the different points of of where everybody listens from right so it's it's kind of like you're saying like you you want to send it out and like for us we want to we obviously just get to kind of drop it on a on a page and people can listen from everywhere but it's really cool to gather that information and mm-hmm. and you know get that validation of people kind of checking out the pod or or wearing your glove or kind of checking out any of your your new upcoming line which i want to talk to you about but uh or some of your new stuff coming out but like it's kind of cool to see that and just know that people are, are uh, wearing your gear. Have you, we've asked this question before. Have you come across? I know what you're going to ask. You asked, have you seen anybody wearing your, your gear before? Have you gone out to a course? You didn't know. Yeah. Or you you didn't know had. Actually once I'm still a small brand, but once um, I saw a guy at, at the country club that I belong to, he walks by with the glove. And I'm looking at the glove, and I'm like, I know I shipped to somebody in Houston, but I just didn't think they were that close. Yeah. And and I and I mentioned, and I said, Hey, would you get that glove? And he was like, Oh, my girlfriend ordered it for me. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's, he, he was like, yeah, it's a small brand. It's a pretty cool glove, man. Good quality. Check it out. And I kind of was like, oh, yeah, it's not bad. And, you know, kind of like yeah, played it off. Cool. And then I immediately was like, what the, like, is this really happening? Yeah, it's one of the coolest feelings. You and never yeah, told him? Like, you never told him who really you were? Happening? Never told him who I was. That's never. awesome. Uh-huh. Never, never. That's cool. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. he checks out the pod I just didn't want to come call, like, oh, that's yeah. my brand. He probably wouldn't yeah. even believe him. Like, that's my brand. He's like, man, yeah. get out of here. But I was like, oh, man, pretty cool. And kind of walked up. I was so pumped and hyped. And it just kind of let me know, like, I'm doing something right. That's well, that's so a cool, cool little yeah. reality check for you, too. The fact that he said, like, oh, it's a really good quality glove and I like it. And, like, to not even know who you were, essentially, to tell you that. I mean, that speaks for the product itself right there, right? So must right. have been but really think, reassuring for you. Right. But I think small brands get that love. Big brands don't. You know, if you see a yeah. pair of Nikes, you've yeah. seen Nikes for a thousand of years. But if you see a pair of shoes you've never seen before and someone is taking the risk of wearing it, they're going to be like, yeah, I wonder if you've never heard of. And it's pretty cool, you know. So I agree, yeah. That's the power of, of having a small brand. The word starts to spread and people yeah. feel really good about being different. And I'm super excited about that. Yeah, that, like, I was talking to Bryce earlier. I was uh, talking to somebody about a set of clubs and, and whatnot. And um, I sent over, like, our, my address to, to have them ship them over. And part of the address was the uh, the podcast name, right? So he was like, oh, no way. Like, you're part of the podcast. Like, I listened to, the, like, this episode one time and stuff like that over on, like, YouTube, I think it was, or Spotify or whatever. And I just I screenshot it, sent it to Bryce right away. And I was telling a story about how, like, you know, I was playing at a golf club and like I heard some guys over talk like over talking about the over they were just like up above me on a bridge and they were talking about the pod. I thought it was really cool. It's a really cool thing. Like Bryce sent awesome. me a photo of uh, or a video of uh, a friend of his with some or stickers on the helmet and stuff like that at work. Mm-hmm. It's just really it's always like cool to feel that validation. And when you are a small brand and like Bryce said, so passionate about your brand, those little things like they just they matter, like, man. They feel like huge wins, right? Like mm-hmm. it's just it kind of Definitely. I guess validate your hard work. But so JD, we got a few things coming up. Uh we got a few I noticed that you teased a reel uh I think it was last week, right? So um again, so anybody listening to us at this point, go down the show notes. The Instagram profile is there, the website's there, uh just in the show notes below. And you have a bit of a you're kind of broadening the lineup a little bit you're adding some pieces to it can we talk about that a little yeah 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 definitely um you know i think once we figured out that the the lo- for, first of all people really like our logo it's so, so i don't know what it is about the logo it's, it's so, clean so good they, man it's so good right right so i think the real i put out today would kind of help explain exactly why we decided to go with that logo in the first place but you know People would hit me up. I had one movie star. Um, I say movie star, meaning he's a blue check guy in L.A., let's just say. And he reaches out to me, and he was like, hey, I don't know who you are, but I saw your logo, and I absolutely love your logo. Um, I'm interested in your gloves, and what else do you have? And mm-hmm. the what else do you have question kept popping up. And it was like, hey, I don't play golf, but I love your logo. What else do you have? And I was like. Actually, we're working on, you know, like we're working on some on some cool pieces. And I think I sat down and, and really started to just and I wouldn't say necessarily design some pieces, but kind of curated exactly what I would wear. Um, I wear a lot of black and white. I wear a lot of military green. So it was just like, hey, let's create something that's pretty cool, pretty simple. Um, and it speaks for the brand itself. And I think that's when we came up with the crew. Um the crew sweater with the chenille patch, super awesome, super cool, super different. Um, obviously, the T-shirt for the everyday wear, the polo for the golfer, um, the hoodie for when it gets cold. You know, so I'm thinking really, I'm thinking so basic in the sense of creating cool products that 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 anyone can wear if you play golf or not. And then I also want to, I'm a debut today. Like I haven't even posted this, not on the site. I'm going to show you guys today, but, and I showed some people before, and if you catch it, you catch it, but we're also doing the all black glove and mm. it's called, we're going to call it the OJ oh, or God. the Orenthal or the Orenthal. But this one here is, Clean. I've gotten so many requests to do an all black glove. And I mean, I all like black that. to the point where we even, we even gutted out, like, the, we even yeah. blacked out the logo. I like yeah. that. You know, and that's to say, like, this is if you know, you know, type of thing. Like, I love you see that. An all black glove, not shiny black, but like a matte black. 
it really goes with the collection. So we're dropping this. I mean, I haven't even posted this yet. We're dropping this, um, I'm thinking October 3rd, but we'll see. Yeah, we Dude, that would like go a, nice with my uh, shoe hat, black shoe hat combo. That would, man. That <laughs> would. We need the like dun 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 yeah. breaking news or something right, like that. Right. We need yeah, some we need some editing piece news. here. Yeah, but, definitely uh, breaking news. <laughs> that's sweet. So JD, would you consider it like, you know, it started out as a seven as seven iron. So okay, one thing that I did want to say that I don't want to forget is when you talk with people who are getting into the game of golf, right. That are starting to learn the game of golf. I have, I, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about one of my buddies and, uh, rich, I hope you don't mind me saying this. I know he listens to the pod sometimes. So like he's, you know, he's just a, a regular, like likes to go out golf and every weekend kind of thing. Um, it doesn't worry too much about score. Just likes to have a good time. But he's like, if I can't hit a good shot, I'm going to hit my seven iron. Like, that's his, like, reliable club. And I know in one of your reels, you mentioned that you went for some instruction, and the the instructor said, bring your seven iron. It'll be your most consistent club, which I think relates to a lot of people. That's going to bring a lot of people just to you naturally. And then as soon as they see your logo, it's so clean. Like, it's so awesome. Bryce and I said the same thing, right? So there's, like, a hook there. It's almost like... It's almost like you have a marketing background or something, you know, <laughs> like you said, right? So I, 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 I actually do. So it's <laughs> yeah. funny you say that. Yeah, yeah, man. It's do. it's Stay like consistent is gonna be key. So I found that when I when I thought about the seven iron, the logo, kind of just bringing people in in the golf space, and then you're mentioning maybe just a little bit more of like a streetwear lineup too. So are you are you kind of branching out? Or are you kind of are you are you crossing both? It seems like there is such a relation in golf now in the way that apparel is moving to connect, you know, the golf course and make it a hopefully a little less stuffy so we can have a, a bit of a streetwear lineup with it. Yeah, I think the the game the golf culture is moving towards being able to play play nine and go into the bar and hang out with your friends right after and then go home. So it's kind of moving into that more of that super casual space. Yeah. And you see they're asking the question. I think they asked the question yesterday, like, you know, are they going to get rid of polos at the Ryder Cup as an example? So it's definitely leaning towards more of a casual game. And we're getting an influx of players, but we're also getting an influx of individuals who just want to wear a polo, go have, I mean, want to wear a T-shirt, Go have a good a good time and then go home. They're not looking to be like you said, stuffy, you know, shirt tucked in, must wear a belt. And I, again, I get it. I know there's a place for that in golf. I would never sit up here and say no. I'm a traditionalist at heart, but I know as the game expands, I want to be able to cater to everyone who, yeah. who's interested in the game of golf. And even mm. if you don't play the game of golf and you like a really cool logo, hey, we're here for that too. You know, so mm-hmm. that's kind of how I envision this game going to be. This golf apparel game is going to be within the next two years i think brands are going to strictly cater to golf to golfers and then those who want to kind of enter that space can wear whatever they want and still feel good and free as well i agree i agree 100 percent. because i mean me personally i love getting all suited up in my golf gear and going to play and trying to look good and you'll always have those people but like you said you'll all you're starting to get those people who just want to go play in a t-shirt and sh- and I don't know basketball shorts or just um, sport short kind of thing and go have a good time. So I hope it gets there. I just I want to see both. I don't want to see one end of the spectrum or the other because I think there's a place for golf clothes in in quotations because they look good and people look professional and it's fun. But I also think there's a big space for the casual casual look too. So right. I I think the course will dictate that. I think yeah. you know. As a brand, you you know where you're, we you know you know where the Peter Molars will play. Like you just know, you know, mm-hmm. and then you know with the, you know the local municipal course, you, you may get a guy with the t-shirt on and mm-hmm. and just trying to hang out, and drink some beers, and play golf. We get mm-hmm. it, and I I don't think you know those exclusive clubs will ever change their policy, nor should they. Mm-hmm. But you know because they, I mean you know you you're paying for that experience. But on the other side, hey, I want to pay for more casual experience. I want to make sure that that's there as well. And mm-hmm. I, I want to be able to sit in between both and capture both audience. And I think with our logo, but yet our still cool styling, we'll be able to do both. So that's going to be the goal. Yeah. So, J.D., you mentioned uh, you wear a lot of blacks, whites, military green, something like I kind of got on right now. But we can't help but notice some of the colors that you showed us on those gloves and the shoe collection and stuff in the back. So um 
do you do you feel like those are like accent pieces are they something to show a bit of your personality i mean well i I don't let my personal preference kind of dictate what the world you know wants and need Mm -hmm. again we are going into colors um this is where again showing something that's you know i kind of i kind of sneak peeked it early but you know this is the green and white that I we're preparing that. for the ma- like that, you know yeah. we're preparing for the masters this is like a one of one um but the point is is that we're looking at you know we're already thinking um twin summer spring of 2024 and and you know we're thinking of the greens we're thinking of the the yellows and so forth but it still needs to be subtle enough where it's not so bright you know I would never do an all yellow shirt but I would probably do you know, a black shirt with, with um, a yellow logo as an example. So it's just ways of that we're going to dress it up and still be true to the brand and not go so far out. But we're always going to allow the gloves to speak for you. So you can have one all black and have a really cool glove and feel like, all right, this is the way I'm going to stick out a little bit. Mm-hmm. I like that. That glove is so cool, man. I really mm-hmm. like the patch, like just the, the fold over Velcro patch. I like that a lot. Yeah. We're, we're, we're you know, and, it's, and we're able to do ample colors, you know, but I'm not say ample. I'm lying. If I said ample, we're able to do a few colors that they can still make and hold the integrity of what we want. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Green just so happened to be one of those colors. Um, a dark gray would be another color, a light gray and a navy blue. So we'll still be able to add color, but if the if it compromises the integrity of the glove itself, I won't do it. See, I actually I just, just had a flashback to episode number fifty. I don't know why I remember this one, Bryce, but I remember the guys from we had the guys on from Dormy Networks or from Dormy, sorry. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of Dormy. They're one of the biggest, if not the biggest, custom head cover manufacturer in the world. I would say so. probably biggest. They make some of the best pieces that uh, that you can get out there, right? So, um, they're like every time Taylor Made has a new release, like they're building covers for them. It's it's really really incredible. But they talked about the idea of they went to Italy, found a leather manufacturer, sourced the ability to be able to dye different leathers and whatnot, so it didn't lose any of its. Uh, you know, any of its look out in the sun because it's on top of the bag, kind of like a glove would be. It's exposed all the time, right? So it was really fascinating to kind of hear that story. It kind of like reminded me of yours walking down the streets of Thailand or flipping through the Google Maps of Thailand, right? So it was, it's neat to think about that idea and how to build that. And then I think the added aspect of you're wearing it as like a athletic piece though. So when you add the glove on with the sweat and stuff like that, that would be something that's very difficult. So being able to find that and being able to bring a bit of color to people's game, that's so cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely somebody who likes to kind of keep it casual, stand out. Like if I can stand out on the course by wearing some of those things to take away from my lack of golf game lately, that's great, man. Take, uh, take some of the heat off my, uh, my struggling game, but it's, um, it's definitely something that I think a lot of people are looking forward to in the game and uh, are looking for when they're uh, when they're out golfing, right? So, um, do we got a few minutes with you, JD? Can we can we talk shoes for a few minutes before we let you go? I mean, that's 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 what I'm here for. I'm here for the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying, I've had a conversation. I was having a conversation last night about. Maybe you'll maybe you'll know these, but so I I just picked up the USC low dunks, which are really cool. They're like my old high school colors, the maroon and yellow. And then I had this one pair of like they were uh, 2006 Air Stabs and a cross country version or something with the insert like inside. And I looked up a pair of them the other day, and they were so cool. But is there any uh, like you obviously have a huge collection? Are these all golf shoes behind you on the wall? Yep. Yep. Uh, I've, I've no, I've, I've no longer, I no longer collect regular sneakers. Okay. Um, I only collect golf shoes. I, I personally think I have the biggest golf shoe collection here in Houston <laughs> and I'm willing to put that up against, against any and in anyone. Um, and I, I probably have one of the oldest pair of golf Nikes out, um, still in the box in Houston as well. So okay. it's, I'm a bit of a fanatic when it comes to golf shoes these days. I don't get everything because I'm, I'm I still like what I like, but yeah, I'm I'm a huge 
I'm a huge collector. I've, I've never, I'm, I'm, I'm true to my roots of collecting is just now I've shifted away from, you know, the Jordan ones and the Yeezys and now it's just all golf shoes. Okay. Are you wearing every pair of those or are you sticking to a little rotation? If you promise not to judge me, Bryce, I'll tell you, right? So I'm not rich, I promise you, but I try and buy two pairs and I'll say oh, okay. one for play. One, I try to say one for play, one for display. Right. And it's just like I'll dog one out, but I, I still want to kind of like keep a pair yeah. for my child's like college fund. You know, it's like kind of sell them down the line and, and, and they'll be covered because, I mean, at the end of the day, they're worth money. But I always feel like if I don't wear them, I'm going to just save them and sell them. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what yeah. got me but thinking. That's right. That's what got me thinking about those air stabs. Like I looked them up and they were up for, I saw one of them for 700 euros or something like that. And I thought like I maybe paid 150 bucks for them or something like that. Like imagine just having that knowledge to sit on those, which is what you're doing now, which is mm-hmm. could right, be incredibly right, valuable. Right. Can you tell us what the old ones are that you have? Um, I can show you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would love to see those. Definitely don't need the location because this sounds like a pretty uh, pretty serious shoe vault, but I like it. Like, I definitely, you open up, like, the back of my truck, Bryce, and, like, obviously we're <clears throat> lucky enough to have such a good friend in Bob Winskwitz over at Squares. Mm-hmm. So we've uh, we've got a few sets of those, but I just have a few there, like, in the back of my truck. But but I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm always looking to just get new shoes. Whenever I see them come out, whenever I see, yeah. like, the release on Golf Town or whatever it is, I'm always, always I'm, looking for them. I'm the same way. I just, I, I, I can't, I don't have the money to afford them um, right now, and I would have a million pairs if I could afford them. But honestly, with, with Bob being so great to us and how good those shoes are, I, I stick to those pretty good. So so this is the Air, the air, um, air Norfolk. So it's pretty Ooh. oh are, they, pretty are those pretty fours cool. no i wish they were four uh, i thought oh wow those are sweet look oh. at the spikes though the That's old so school nice. traditional like That's 19, so cool 1980 1981 82 spikes I love that. So I, I know most of you are listening so to us cool. on Spotify and Apple, but you got to go over and check out YouTube because those things are <laughs> so sweet. I um, last uh, a couple years ago now they released like the Stan Smiths and they have those. Uh, right, right. Gotcha. What is the what is the thing called on the front of those? Uh, oh. the the, uh, okay. the, the lace the lace protector. Yeah, there's like a term for it, and I remember I searched it one day, and I don't know what it is now. So. I got a question for you, JD. So Adidas Golf released mm-hmm. just a few hours ago, ten hours ago. Mm-hmm. This will be out on Friday. But do you know the shoe I'm talking about? The oh, MC eighty seven four B. Yes, you know I know. So, what is your okay? So modern golf shoes inspired by classic Adidas golf shoes from nineteen eighty seven, the year I was born, built on the iconic Adidas four midsole, so four D midsole. So I think that was on the Ultra Boost, like two years ago or something or in the last couple of years but it's kind of like a blend of the traditional golf shoe with like modern style yeah like modern style like what modern th- soul what do you think about those have you had a chance to see them I, I i did check them out i mean i'm not a big adidas i'm not a big adidas um golf shoe fan i do have some of the stan smiths obviously i did have the the adidas with the with the vice collab I did get those as well. They're a bit high. Yeah. I, I thought they were a bit high. It kind yeah, of scared me for a second there. Like, maybe I need to see them in, yeah, maybe I need to see them in person. But, um, I mean, honestly, Adidas hasn't missed. Mm-hmm. In all honesty, I think the last two collections, the last two they dropped, um, the last one they dropped with the with the black with the black bottom, the black was that, like the black midsole. Those are fire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just... I'm just not a huge fan yet. I'm I'm still kind of stuck on Nike right now. The uh, the Adidas ones that I like, the Stan Smiths with the the Vice collab was the like the multicolored sole, right? No, the Vice collab are the 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 highlight the highlight colors. These over here. Can you see them over there? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Damn, those are cool. So, 
yeah, those two are probably the only Adidas I, I I really like. I haven't worn them yet, but I I do like the the brightness of them all. Found and that's it. something else you can wear all black and then wear some really cool bright shoes and be like, all right, no, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like that. So for anybody who's been searching what the uh, term is for those, it's called kilties. They're called kilties. The, mm. the, the lace oh, protector that sits okay. over the top. Yeah, they're called kilties. I remember looking that up because I was so curious what that was. It's uh, They're cool. Like, they're cool if you can. I've got a set, like, behind me, actually, here, just down on the on the shelf. But um, I've only got a couple of shoes here. I got, like, a set of John Daly square shoes signed right here, which is kind of cool. Like those. Yeah. Those yeah, they're, they're cool. They're cool. They're just, like, the USA ones, and they're uh, they're signed by John Daly. So they're sweet. they got to be in the collection. Right. But, um. Let me let me let me ask you a quick question. You have Wave Time DTS. What is that? Is that is that the bundle pack for for, for music? What is that? No. So this is our friend Mark's brand. Uh, he's in Toronto. It's it's a golf and streetwear brand as well. Uh, Wave Golf, and then it's uh, that's OTS. So he had made Bryce and I a couple uh, a couple hats, like a couple custom hats, which was really cool. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. You know, I like that back there. I, I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like each time we get like a couple things like i got a couple hats up like um from tight knit clothing like he does a golf and streetwear uh, line as well up here in toronto so it's it's really cool like i'll try and grab a couple pieces throw them up on the shelf so hopefully if somebody's watching they get to see and then i got the caddy bit behind another Mm -hmm. caddy bit on the ground that i can't post yet i gotta i gotta i gotta send you guys as a welcome pack definitely when we you know when we're done send me your uh your information i'll get you guys taken care of for sure Absolutely, JD. That'd be, that'd be great, man. That'd be great because I, Heck I, yeah. I am not invested in a specific glove yet. Like I always wore, <laughs> I think like the players one. You know the players one, right? Like that's like the one that I wore like when I was younger. I've wore some like Callaway ones and stuff like that. The Kirkland knockoff one is just you know, but oh, Kirkland's my boy. I gotta get something with a little, a little flavor to it, man. I'm, yeah. I'm missing it's that one. It's hard. I, to, I, I say this much. Um, I've seen the Kirkland gloves. I've worn the Kirkland glove. It's a hard brand to compete with because, you know, they're getting, let's say they're getting B grade material. Let's just say right. they're getting B, B grade material, but they're getting it at such a great cost. Like yep. it's really hard to be Kirkland. I mean, I'm, I can, I can be honest, you know, it's, it's a tough brand to compete with. Um, it's just one of those things you just have to live with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're ordering, God, a... everyone has a Costco next door. So yeah, wait man. till they come out with an iron set. I bet you Taylor Made will start saying they're hard to compete with. They have just, come out with an yeah, iron I mean, set. It's yeah, a, I don't know if they're like officially butter. out yet. It's gone but... through. It's gone through the USGA. It went through. Yeah, in I just don't know if they're in stores yet. I don't think they're no in stores. next year, twenty twenty. But like, look at the wedges. You see those things everywhere. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, it's like it's crazy. They've it's crazy what they've done. But yeah, like yeah. you can't compete with that because they just make billions and billions and billions of dollars. Well, if you're ordering a hundred, they're ordering a hundred thousand, right? So it's yeah, like exactly. a lot of and margins the and minimums. They're getting yeah. gloves if they're able just from understanding marketing and branding and, and and manufacturing now. If they're able to sell, I believe they're selling three gloves for fourteen. Is that what the price? Four is? gloves for twenty, I think, yeah. or. 19. So if they're doing four gloves, if they're doing four gloves for twenty plus packaging, I want you to understand they're getting those gloves for under two dollars a glove. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Insane. insane. Probably less yeah. than that. Like that's insane. You can, you can get. I mean, you really can't compete with that. So my goal is to have a core audience. Um, you know, in marketing, we'll say you have you can start off with the three F's, and that's friends, fools, and family. But then you move over into like the core base of your audience. Mm-hmm. And I think if I was to get a core base of 150 people, men, women, it doesn't matter. And if they're able to buy from me every month, I'd be a millionaire in a few years. Mm-hmm. And I want everyone to kind of think that way. Don't worry about the masses, man. Just worry about your true following. Stick to them. Give them exactly what they want. Stay true to them. Take care of them, and they'll take care of you. Yeah, you also got to think, though, Costco is not – your initial co- competitor kind of because you're more of the custom look good feel good um standpoint right. like they're more of the get a hundred million out for as cheap as we can and doesn't yeah. really matter what the quality is it goes right back to me saying the smaller right. brands care more right so i think your audience is more targeted to those people who really want the good look and the high quality so so right. i don't really think you gotta be worried about too worried about kirkland but 
It can be difficult though, Bryce, or as a business owner. I remember I used to. Oh, hundred percent. I I built a supplement 100%. company, like an e-commerce company, when I was when I was younger, when I was very young, and um, Iovate at the time was like, uh, I sure they, I'm sure they still are. They mass produce like almost every protein mm-hmm. that you're gonna buy or or pre workout or whatever built by Iovate. They um, or the manufacturer for like muscle tech and whatnot. So I'd look at the product margins list and the minimums and stuff like that. And I'd look at like what I'm buying and then I look Can't at compete, like yeah. the pyramid and how it goes up of what everybody else is buying and how much they're paying for it. And it's just, it's so hard to think, well, yeah. am I ever going to get to that point charging this? And like you said though, JD, you'll get there, man. If you can get that like 150 people that just keep coming back each month or every couple of months, that's, that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Right. So, yep. Yeah. But JD, this was great, man. I I don't know how much time you had, but I know we took a took a good chunk of an hour of your time here. Really appreciate it, man. Hopefully, we can do this again as you release new stuff. I know you have some more coming. Right. So, again, the the website, the Instagram, definitely they're just down in the show notes below. Go click it, give them a follow, check it out. Um, really appreciate everybody who listens to the pod. This is episode number 153, 153 straight Fridays now, Bryce. So, mm-hmm. um, this is, it's really great. So if you're following us to this point, go down below, follow seven iron golf. It's gotta be one of the coolest logos, right? Bryce? Like it's, it's, it's up there for sure. It's so good. It's so good. I, I love it. I appreciate that boys. I definitely appreciate that. And thank you guys for having me out. Um, so let's definitely do it again. He's out in my ball and of course so I tee up I lose a ball and I re-up I miss a fairway, I probably end up in the ocean Or maybe the beach And I'm on a par 5 and I'm finna go reach it Second was blind, I see it Feel like it might be an albatross, worst case scenario